Hi, in this video, we're going to be building a two input multiplexer or two input digital mux made entirely out of NAND gates. So first, what is a digital mux? A digital mux is a digital component that lets you select one of the two inputs based on the state of a third digital input. So in this mux, based on what the state of this input is, it will be selecting one of these two other inputs to be shown at the output. And the other input that isn't selected is just totally ignored. It just doesn't matter. So CircuitLab actually has a mux you can use. It's one of the digital primitives. But instead, I'm going to be building my own made entirely out of NAND gates. So let's explore the NAND gate a little bit. Whenever I see a new component, I like to simulate it, you know, poke it around, see what it does. So I have a better idea of how to work with it. And the best way to do that is just simulate it in its basic form. I'm going to simulate a DC solver here. I have a V out being shown. Um, and that's 5 volts. When, so then when a two inputs are digital low, basically, basically a voltage of 0, uh, the NAND gate makes the input high, 5 volts. OK, that's cool. Let's see what happens if I make one of these inputs a digital 1. Hit F5 to simulate again. Uh, my V out is still 5. OK, that's, that's fine. Let's see what happens when I make both inputs 1. Interesting. OK, so now my V out is low. Essentially, what we're building here is the truth table of a NAND gate. Um, what I've actually done is I've made the truth table for us to reference here. Um, a NAND gate, whenever both of its inputs are high, will make its input low. And in all other situations, the input is high. And that gives us a couple of very interesting properties. The first one I want to talk about is this configuration. When one of the inputs is high, then the output of the NAND gate is sort of the opposite of whatever the other one is. See over here? When one of them is high, if my other input is high, then the output is low. And if my other output is low, then the output is high. It's a very interesting property. I want to use that in a little bit. So remember it. The other cool thing I can do with a NAND gate is it's very easy to build an inverter by simply doing this. In this configuration, because I have a digital high at both of the inputs, the output is low. And if I was to switch this to a digital low, then two lows will make the NAND gate be high. Basically, this is an inverter. I could just use an inverter, but I'm going to use NAND gates only. OK, so with those two concepts, we have enough here to build our digital mux. So bear with me for a second while I drop a whole bunch of NAND gates onto the circuit here. And I'm going to make this output be the output of my NAND gate. It's going to be the output of my circuit. Uh, this I'm going to connect down here. This is going to come over all the way over here. I'm going to keep that one of that inverting configuration we talked about. Uh, and then these two nodes up here, let me zoom out a little bit. Get rid of these inputs for a second. Uh, I'm going to name some nodes here just to make it easier. This node here, this is going to be my select node. This is one that decides which of these two other inputs get presented at the output. So this node is going to be in one. Copy paste that. I want to call this guy in two. All right, so let's think about what happens in this configuration here. Grab these digital inputs, have them available for me. What's going to happen to this configuration? So let's think what would happen if I put a zero here at my select node. OK, well, if this is zero, then I have a digital low at this NAND gate here. If, there, if either of the inputs to this NAND gate are low, then this input doesn't matter because this is always high, right? Going back to my truth table, if any of the inputs are low, the output is always high. So this is always high in one here, doesn't matter. 
The other thing that does is because this is always high, then this NAND gate is in that sort of like pass-through inverting configuration we talked to a little while ago. So it's gonna take whatever this node here is and put the opposite of it at the output. Okay, so let's go back over here. This is zero, this NAND gate is that straight inverter here, which means this NAND gate 11 is also in that inverting pass-through configuration. So in two sort of gets inverted twice and gets presented at the output. That's really cool. And if I was to, you can kind of see from the topology here, if I was to like move this and make this a one, that logic just inverts itself because this gets inverted here. And now this one is just in a straight up inverting path through configuration to the output. We've made ourselves a digital mux. A link to this video is going to be available. A link to this uh, circuit is going to be available in the comments of this video. Uh, and if you found it useful, please give us a like.